Hello, hello, hello. How are you all doing tonight? Another night of monumental moments in God's word. I am your host, Marla Lacey. I'm so pleased to have you with us on tonight. Um, praise the Lord. I'm so glad, so glad for another day, another day that God has kept me, another day that I am uh, in the land of the living. I have no complaints. God has been good to me. Um, he set me free and I praise God about it. God is uh, a way maker, <laughs> a way maker, a miracle worker. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so for that, I give him praise and I give him glory. Um, I'm just going to, uh, we're going to start out with a little song. So let me, um, well, let me pray. We're going to pray. We're going to do all the things that we normally do um, to get started. But I'm just um, trying to get my stuff adjusted because um, this was one of the problems with my uh, thing last week um, was trying to make sure that all the cameras and stuff are doing the right thing uh, for the, uh, the purpose in which we have them. So I praise the Lord and I want to always give him glory because he is worthy. He's worthy to be praised. And so we're going to listen to, uh, we're going to get on here and get a, a song just to get us kind of started today because, um, you know, I, I, I just be liking my music. I love, I love my music and, um, and I love what God does through music. Um, so we're going to just play, uh, let's see some music and I'm going to, uh, the best playlist of Sinach, S I N A C H gospel songs of 2020. And we're just going to see what comes on here because I love music. Um, so let's see what they what is bound to be playing. I think this is Waymaker. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Right now I'm just gonna I'm gonna just invite some people. You so are we, here. So we can uh, make sure that we stay online. I worship you. Yes. I worship you. I worship you. You are here. Hallelujah. Working in Thank you, Jesus. I worship you. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. I hope everyone is doing well on tonight. I hope everybody's doing well on tonight. We got a good lesson on tonight. You are here. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. You can go on my page, Monumental Moments in God's Word, as well. Waymaker, miracle worker, promise keeper, light in the darkness, my God, that is you. Hallelujah. How many of you all know that he's a way maker? He's a miracle worker. He's the promise keeper. He's a light in the darkness, my God. That is who you are, God. Thank you all for joining another night of monumental moments in God's word. You all make sure that you, you uplift the families, Lord God, that are suffering loss, Lord God. In the midst of this situation with COVID, with all the brutality that's going on within the homes, outside the homes, in the political realm, in the, uh, in the streets, with the police departments. We can't take matters into our own hand. We have to pray and we have to ask God to continue to lift up those people, help them to see their wrong, see what's going on around us and know that God is yet in control. 
and all things work together for the good of those that love God and are called according to his purpose. So we have to believe that God has a purpose in everything. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just, I'm just, you hear that little peck and I hate, I hate that, but that's me um, inviting people, inviting people to, to come on. Hallelujah. I wish they had one that I could just do everybody at one time on this part, but it's all good. I'm learning. I'm learning what, how Facebook and Messenger and all those different things are working, along with um, we're also can be found on podcast, on all the various podcasts. We are on Spotify, iHeartRadio, Apple Podcasts, Podchasers, uh, CastBox. And um, so I'm just thankful that God has opened up the doors where we are um, we're live all over. So that means a lot of people are hearing us all over. And uh, here, uh, and I just praise God for that because uh, it's not to, not to boast in anything because it's nothing that I am. Without God, nothing that I do is important. It's all to the glory of God and that we have to make sure that we are always pointing Everything that we do, as long as God is telling us that's what we to do, then it's okay to be to do it. So I just praise the Lord. I praise the Lord. Any of you all that are uh, coming on, you all make sure you share this. Share the word to people, Lord God. There are so many people that just need to hear a word, a word for, from you to help us to grow, to help us to learn. Hallelujah. To help us to be who God has called us to be. And he's called us to be, all, all of us have a purpose. And we need to know what our purpose is. We need to know how to live our life according to God's word and what he has for us to do. We must learn to be obedient to what he has us to do and just do it. Just do it. Don't matter what other people say. Don't matter what they think. Don't matter. None of that matters. But as long as we're doing things according to what God has called us to do. And that's where our, that's what, that's what we have to be. We have to be obedient. We have to be obedient. Hi, Curtis. God bless you. God bless you for joining on Monumental Moments in God's Word. Thank you for joining on tonight. Hallelujah. I thank God for you. I thank God for each and every one of you all that do join, whether it's by Facebook, whether it's by Instagram, whether it's by uh, YouTube that I come on later because I got to upload this to YouTube afterwards. But, you know, you can go on my page, on Monumental Moments in God's Word. We can see it live right now. Hallelujah. And so right now we're listening to the playlist of Sinatch Gospel 2020 most popular Sinatch songs on all of the all-time playlists. And um, just, just to get a little, you know, get a little ha-ha in there. Get a little glory. Get a little, you know, get that feeling. Get that feeling of us being, you know worshiping God. That's what we got to do. We got to worship God. We got to come into his gates with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise. Bless the Lord. Hallelujah. And I'm just kind of typing people to let them know that I'm on. Um, and I praise God for each person that is on. We're getting ready to start. Hallelujah. We're getting ready to start. And so I'm thankful. I'm thankful, thankful, thankful. So uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, or I mean on uh, Facebook Live, that's fine. On Instagram, praise the Lord. If you're listening on, uh, I'll be on YouTube a little later, but and Spotify and, and, and those places, iHeartRadio. But anyway, um, thank you for joining Monumental Moments on tonight. Monumental Moments in God's Word on tonight. Tonight we're going to be, uh, my message is called, Look, Lord, Lord. L-O-R-D, Lord, help me to look at me. Help me to look at me. Because what we do is we many times look at everybody else, but we don't look at what's going on with us. We need to know what, what those deep-seated things that are inside of us. You know, we got to know who... Um, who God wants us to be, but there's a lot of things we got to fix it within ourselves. We got to fix a lot of things. We got to allow God to fix them. We can't fix them because there's nothing good in, in our flesh. Everything good comes from God. Good evening, Cynthia. God bless you. God bless you. And so tonight we're going to be talking about that. So um, uh, we're going to do a prayer. We're going to come in the word and pray first, and then I'm going to say the warrior's prayer. Hallelujah. The warrior's prayer um, is, is uh, something that I, that God gave me 
and I uh, continuously say it because it's very important that we arm ourselves with the uh, with the full armor of God, that we keep that on. And I'm going to turn down this music because um, we had that, <laughs> and it's all uh, it's all uh, YouTube. You can find all this on YouTube music. I'm not. I don't have any rights to any of the music. Praise God. But we're going to go ahead and start. Hallelujah. We're going to go ahead and start. So let me turn this down. To God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. And that was the first song we heard was Waymaker. So I'm getting ready to shut that down for now. Hallelujah. And we're going to go ahead and start. Hallelujah. Father God, hallelujah. Lord, I come before you, Father. Lord God, I just want to say thank you. I want to thank you for building up my confidence, Lord God. Thank you for uh, allowing me, Lord God, to speak to your people, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. You are worthy and you're, and you're God, you are everything. You're everything to me, Father God. And Father, I just bless your name. I, I give you glory. I give you all the glory because you alone are worthy. There's nothing that's in me that is good, Lord God, but without you, without you, there's nothing that's good. There's nothing that's right, Lord God, but with you, all things can be made perfect. We, we're not living here on earth perfect, but we can be perfected in you, Lord God. So I give myself away to you, Lord. I surrender myself to you, Lord, that I will decrease. Marla will decrease so that you will increase in me, Lord God, that your word will come forth, Lord God, with boldness and with truth, Lord God. Father God, I thank you for each and every person on tonight, Lord God. Father God, you meet them where they are, Lord God. Meet them with every need that they have, Lord God. Father God, bless them in places that they never thought that they could be blessed in, Lord God. Father God, as this word goes forth on tonight, Lord God, it may seem harsh at times. It may seem a little bit rough at times, but Lord God, it's what you gave me to give the people, Lord God. And so, Father God, we have to examine ourselves, Lord God. So help me to examine myself, Lord God. The word comes to me first, Lord, and I thank you for exposing myself to myself, Lord God, that I will know that I need to call on you while it's day and call on you ever the more, Lord God, that I will... Uh, uh, do all that you called me to do and that I would be as faithful as I possibly can with your help, Lord God. So I just call on you to help me, Lord God. Help those that, Lord God, that need your touch right now, Lord God. Those that are dealing with uh, death, Lord God. Bless the families all over the United States, Lord God, and all over the other countries, Lord God, that are suffering from COVID, Lord God. Lord God, touch the ones, Lord God, that are in the in the, uh, 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 the leadership in our country, Lord God. Give them strength, Lord God, to continue to do and call, be a call according to what your purpose is for them, Lord God. Help them to come together, Lord God. That it not be about Republican, that it not be about Democrat, that it not be about people that are deciding on either side but father god let it be about your will lord god your will for your people lord god father god i thank you lord god that everything that you touch lord god will be glorified everything and everybody that you touch will know that they got a touch from you, Lord God. So Father God, right now I ask, Lord God, that you continue to touch my family, Lord God. Touch the families out there that are going to be watching this, Lord God, that, that are going to be listening later on, Lord God. Father God, touch them in a mighty way, Lord God. Let them know that it is you that has made them, and it's not nothing that they did of themselves. Father God, give them the mind, Lord God, to want to serve you, Lord God. But God, Father God, I ask that you take all pride away, Lord God, and cause us to be humble, Lord God, a humble spirit, Lord God, that we ask of you, Lord God, let us not be a uh, weary and well-doing because you said that if we're weary and we, and we, and we're trying to do what's right, when we're weary, it, it causes us to do the things that you would not want us to do. We become fearful, Lord God, and fear is not of you, Lord God, but we reverence you with fear of your trim uh, and, and with trembling and honor and, 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 and reverence, Lord God. So Father God, keep us as that we, the we will be kept, Lord God. Lord God, mold us in the way that you need us to be. I am the uh, the clay. You are the potter. So mold us, Lord God. Mold us, mold us in the way that you want us to be. Shape our lives, Lord God. Cut out anything that was not like you, Lord God. Cut it out from my life, Lord God. Cut out anything that's not like you. Burn up 
anything that's not like you, Lord God, so that I that you will be glorified, that I will do what you called me to do, that I will say what you have me to say. Father God, in the mighty name of Jesus, bless this night, Lord God. Bless the word that's going to come forth, Lord God. Touch that we may be uh, that we may be built up in you, Lord God. Father God, heal, Lord God, everywhere. In Jesus' mighty name we pray and we thank you. Hallelujah and amen. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you, Lord God. So y'all heard the word. Um, you heard the, uh, the, the, the prayer, Lord God. I thank God for it. And we are getting ready to go ahead and start doing what we must do. And that's, we're going to say the warrior's prayer now, because we all need to keep on that whole armor of God. This is not just for me. This is for everybody. Heavenly father, here I am, your warrior. I'm here preparing myself for battle. Today, I claim victory over the, over the enemy by putting on the whole armor of God. I put on the girdle of truth. May I stand firm in the truth of your word so that I will not be a victim to Satan's lies. Hallelujah. I put on the breastplate of righteousness. May it guard my heart from evil so that I will remain pure and holy and protected under the blood of Jesus Christ. I put on the shoes of peace. May I stand firm in the good news of the gospel so your peace, your peace, Lord Jesus, will shine through me and be a light to everybody that I encounter. I take the shield of faith. May I be ready for Satan's fiery darts of doubt, denial, and deceit so that I will not be vulnerable to spiritual defeat. Hallelujah. I put on the helmet of salvation. May I keep my mind focused on you so that Satan will not have a stronghold on my thoughts. I take the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, and that I may be ready in my, that it may be ready in my hands so that I can expose those tempting words of Satan. Here I am again by faith. Your warrior has put on the whole armor of God. And now I am prepared. Now you are prepared to live this day in spiritual victory. May, can we say amen and put our hands, clap our hands and ask God to thank you. Thank you, Lord God. Thank you for doing all things for us. Hallelujah. Thank you, Miss Cynthia, for watching on tonight. Uh, Richard Brown and, and, and Selena, thank you all. I praise God that you're here. Um, so my message on tonight is, Lord, help me to look at me. Help me to look at me. Proverbs 16 and 18 says, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. God's word assures us that pride is the root of rubble in our lives. It's the root of all bad things that happen in our life. It's normally, it normally comes down to pride when we have a lot of things that we shouldn't be thinking in our minds. So in 1 Corinthians 10 and 12, it warns us, so if you think you are standing firm, Hallelujah. If you are thinking that you are standing firm, mm, hallelujah. If you are thinking that you are standing firm, my God, my God, firm, be careful that you don't fall. Again, if you think you are standing firm, be careful that you don't fall. Be careful that you don't fall. That's an important that's an important lesson right there. Be careful that you don't fall because some of us think that we are standing firm and it don't take nothing but a little th and next thing you we toppled over. What are some Bible verses about pride? Okay, so we have uh, uh, the King in the King James Version, uh, Proverbs 11 and 2 says, when pride cometh, then cometh shame, but with the lowly is wisdom. And then in Proverbs, you see Proverbs 16 and five also says everyone, everyone that is proud in the heart is an abomination to the Lord. Though hand joined in hand, he shall not be unpunished. Why does God hate pride? The, I mean, that, that'd be one of them questions that you just put your hands up and say, I, I know the answer. I know the answer. Why do you think that God hates pride? Well, God hates pride because it is a manifestation of the deep, deepest depravity of the root cause of all forms of sin, all forms of sin. According to Christian teachers that, that I've heard, I don't know why my dog likes to start barking when I have uh, 
uh, when I do this on the radio. Okay. But anyway, according to Christian leaders, the essential vice of the utmost evil, the utmost evil comes from pride. And why is pride an abomination to God? Because pride, because it is a point of uh, confrontation between the things of God and the things of the flesh. I'm going to say that again too. Pride is an abomination because it is the point of confrontation. Y'all know what confrontation is. It's like, I, 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 I got something to say and you got something to say. It's like we're warring against each other. So it, it's the point of confrontation between the things of God and the things of our flesh. It instigates and empowers every possible conceivable sin. Everything that we can possibly think of that is sin, it usually is instigated by pride. It feeds the flesh and makes uh, for feel good. It makes it, it make it, it just w- w- when we feed our flesh with those things, those feel good things. And it's the one place in all of us where the devil retains and keeps a measure of control. I'm, I'm y'all, this is a good this is a good lesson because we have to understand that because it's that place, it's that place inside of us that the devil retains some control. Everything that we do that is sinful usually starts out because of pride, because of pride. Thinking well of of ourselves is one of the highest values that society tells us. Oh, you need to have confidence in yourself and you need to do this. And, and if you get this degree and that degree and da 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 Okay, then, you know, you made it. You done did a good thing. And But the Bible treats pride as a problem. God treats pride as a problem. Isn't an asset or our most pervasive and subtle enemy? Y'all got to decide that within yourself. Is having a lot of pride an asset? Or is it a subtle enemy? Pride is something about self. It's something about selfishness. When we think of pride, you know, they'll be like, you know, have you done something in school or something? And you say, I mean, and somebody says, well, you ought to have a lot of pride in what you do. You know, if you, if you, if you have pride in what you do, you know, da, 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 da. But pride is about self. It's a selfishness and a self-centeredness. So there are six things. The Bible says that there are six things that the Lord hates. Six. But (laughs) the seventh is an abomination to him. A proud look, a lying tongue, a hand shed of innocent blood, a heart that devise wicked imaginations, feet that are swift to go running to mischief, a false witness that speaks lies, and him that soweth discord among the brethren. That's what the word tells us in Proverbs 6, 16 through 19. What is the first thing in question here when we talk about this? A proud look. A proud look, a proud look that the Lord hates primarily. He he hates that with the utmost. Love not the world, neither the things in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh and the lust of the eyes, And the pride of life is not from the father, but it's from the world. We have to know where this stuff comes from. Anything that's in the world, that's of the world, is not of God. Pride is not from the father. It's not his nature to be a proud God. It's his nature to be a humble God. This is the reason why he hates pride. 
In James 4 and 6, it says, God resists the proud, but he gives grace to the humble. So, God loves us, but there's something in us that he does not like, and that's pride. So my lesson tonight was, Lord, help me to look at myself. Help me to look at myself. God doesn't like to see pride in us. If anyone is proud, he sets himself against God. He naturally becomes an enemy of God. That's one of the reasons why Satan got cast, Lucifer got cast from heaven. His life and actions become uh, resistant and displeasing to God. We don't want to displease God. We shouldn't want to displease God. Most importantly, when you are proud, you lose out on God's grace. You lose out on God's grace on your own life, which he would love to give all of us, all the humble, because he gives grace to the humble. Hallelujah. So I ask you, is it worth noting that pride is different than self-esteem? There is a difference. We have self-esteem, meaning a good opinion of yourself. Okay, that's okay. Having self-esteem, doing one, doing what's right when no one else is looking, be, having integrity will have you to have a pretty good self-esteem. But one of the commandments is thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself, right? Matthew 22 and 39 says that. But it's implicit in this verse is that we have to love one another. We have to love one. Paul says in Ephesians 5 and 29, no man ever yet hate his own flesh but nurtures and cherish. They nurture and cherish it. That's what the words, you don't hate yourself. You don't hate your own flesh, but you nurture it. You feed it. You value it. You cherish it. Jesus said, ye are of more value than many sparrows. So, so there are some people who always want to be dominant. They want to have control over everything. Y'all know some people like that? I do. They always want to look down on, on other people. They're seldom submissive and will never accept their defeat. Does that remind you of a leader we've had in our, in our midst? This story makes it clear that pride doesn't want you to face defeat. When, when you see like in our government, where we had that 45 and always wanting to look down upon others, always needing to be right, never submissive and never accepts defeat. So you will think that you are invincible. Some people think that I can do whatever they want because they have the right to do it. They're invincible. They got all the time in the world. But look around you. People are dying every day, young and old. You will think that you are invincible. You cannot fail. You think you think, ah, oh, I, I, I'm making it. I ain't, I ain't no way. But, you, you know, and all these little uh, uh, things on social media, on Facebook, the little the little things about how good you are and how, you know, we all have been guilty of some of that, saying some of that stuff. Uh, the, the little Facebook things that say, you know, what's the best sign of sign of how you are and you're the most courageous and you're the greatest and you're you're a hundred percent not a liar and da 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 all those things, right? <laughs> but no one can overtake you. You believe those things. Pride will prompt you to keep a check that you're always dominating. Always. This happens in family after family. It happens on your work, on your jobs. It happens even in the church. Power is good if it's used for the good of others. Remember that. 
Power is good only if it's used for the good of others. When you have power, you should be doing good for other people. So you can use your power to help other people. Not just your family. Not just your best friend. Not just your, your own church body. That's with, you know, your own five few, five few min, min, uh, members, right? But it's only good if you help others. Spreading it abroad. Helping those that are in need. Withhold not, in Proverbs 30, uh, 3 and 27, withhold not good from them to whom it is due. When it is in the power of thy hand to do it. When you have the power to do what's right, when you have the power to give to somebody that's in need, don't hold your hands tight and not do it. Because you have the power. But power can be abused for your own Selfish reasons. The lust of power. Always wanting to be in power. That invokes and shows the pride that you have within yourself. You cannot see yourself fail. Because failure is not an option. But I'm here to tell you the failure is a stepping stone. It's used as stepping stones to get where you need to be. Where God would have you be. You cannot accept your own mistakes. Have you known people that just can't accept any mistake that they do? The same happened back in the Bible times of Cain. He wanted to, he wanted to be uh, number one. He didn't want to be second best. He wanted to be the best. He wanted to be number one, and when he failed to do so, he got jealous of Abel. And he killed him. He killed him. His own brother. That's why I said it happens in families. Families jealous of each other. Sisters and brothers don't like each other because they're jealous of each other. They want to have control. They want to be number one. Parents. Parents, 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 parents. Stop making your children feel like one child is better than the next. Stop it. Stop treating your children dis, uh, 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 unfair. Stop treating them unfair. That's why you have a lot of problems with kids is they see you talk good to Johnny all the time, but you knock Susie out. You give Johnny everything, but you don't give uh, Sally anything. We got to be fair. He wants, he, he don't want you to, he don't want your children to be at odds with each other because of your decisions of how you decided to treat them. First of all, this is first murder, uh, the, the, the murder between Cain killing Abel was the first murder in history of mankind. Those was Adam and Eve's children. So they were the first to have murder. Okay. There, there was murder. But it was because of pride. It was because of pride. The pride that entered through Adam and Eve and was now bearing fruits in the lives of their offspring, their children. Hallelujah. Now we're going to talk about humility a little bit because I'm going to tie it all together. Humility and grace, they go hand in hand. The more we understand God's grace, the more humble we become or that we should become okay living a humble life involves serving other people serving being of service i am not a minister of the gospel for myself i'm a minister of the gospel to serve others to serve others i am a servant you know we look at the we look at old, the slavery times and think, I'm not going to call myself a servant because, uh, you know, ser uh, servitude's over. We, I ain't no slave to nobody. But we're servants. We are supposed to be servants. <laughs> Lord, help us, help us. Living humble, living a humble life involves serving other people. Regularly 
we are doing it. Asking God for forgiveness, remembering our dependence upon him and him alone, a life marked by humility, think so much of God that there is little room to think of yourself. If you dedicate your life as in humility and think so much of God, you will not think of yourself all the time, all the time, okay? Pride will literally destroy the very fiber of our being. It will literally kill us. Pride is the very thing that keeps us from crying out to the Lord. When we have so much pride, we don't think we wrong. We don't think we need God. Can I hear an amen? But pride is the thing that keeps us from crying out to the Lord and it keeps us from the reality of admitting that we are in need of a savior. I want everybody that's listening to understand we need a savior. And when you know that you know that you know that you need Jesus, hallelujah. When you know that you know that you know that you need Jesus, you know that you need the Lord. Hallelujah. You know that you need the Lord. That's what we, that's what we, that's what we are about. That's what, we, that's what we should be all about. We know we need the savior. A life marked with humility thinks so much of God and less of yourself. Pride will literally destroy the very fiber of you. I've said that. It will. It will destroy everything about you. But it keeps us from the reality of admitting that we need God. It keeps us from the reality that we have a lot of problems within ourselves. When you think about it, a person who thinks they are just fine, I'm okay. Ain't nothing wrong with me. I'm fine. I'm this. I'm that. Mm, are we really? When you don't feel the need to ever go to the hospital, when you don't think you need a doctor and you're really sick, even though we all know how dangerous pride is, there are people that fail to go to the doctor because pride is dangerous. It's a difficult spot to even find ourselves in. We like to justify, justify how we uh, are, are without we like to justify how we are call, how we call things we don't like to call out pride we don't like to diagnose our own heart it's much easier to diagnose somebody else it's much easier to look at all the problems that other people have than to think about our own hearts needing surgery but when it comes to diagnosing our own hearts, those of us who have the disease of pride have a hard time identifying that disease. You go to, you decide you're going to go to the doctor and the doctor tells you, you know, you got this problem. You go, no, not me. Um, you believe the doctor? No, that wasn't me. He was talking, uh, my, I think my sister has them problems. I think my, bro you know, I think my brother has those problems. Um, but no, 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 that ain't me. That ain't me. So, then you don't, you don't go get it fixed. You don't get those problems, those issues fixed. But when it comes to uh, 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 identifying our own disease, the disease of the heart, pride distorts our vision. It distorts how we see and how we're supposed to see, causing us to view ourselves through some other puffy lens. You know, I wear glasses, right? And, and my glasses, my bifocals, I don't have the bifocal things there, but I got those uh, progressive. So when you look up and all, all that good stuff. But, but pride distorts the vision. And it makes you see things fluffed up. It makes you see things colorful. And that's how we see ourselves. But when we put the glasses on, when we have that, our, 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 our vision checked and, 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 and then the, the, the Dr. Jesus gives us our, 
our new eyesight, our new eye, our, our new glasses. And then we start being able to see better. We start seeing that the red really is red and it's not really orange. And we start seeing that purple is really purple and not blue. And we start seeing the gray is gray and not brown. Okay. So we start learning things about us when we, when our vision is corrected. But when we don't, it allows that lens, if we don't get that lens, those new glasses, the, the new eyesight, it causes us to have distorted reality. It causes us to lie to ourselves so much we begin to believe that truth. You know, they'll say that's your truth. It could be a lie because you told yourself that so much. Pride will allow us to see our most negative behaviors. It allows us to see those stanky stanky attitudes to see right uh, to see the sin that's right before us we we will think everybody else is wrong all their actions are wrong and thoughts will cause us to think we are most beautiful that we are the most comp competent we got it all under control we don't need no help because we already know we good we can't even recognize or even think that we struggle with pride because we don't see pride in our hearts. And when we think that we see pride, we hurry up and cover it up. If you see yourself being uncomfortable with patting yourself on the back too much for, for the, all the good things that you know you do, your good deeds, remember? How great of a job that you do. All you get patted on the back and you you glad about it. Those are the times that you should be able to recognize and it should alarm you that there is a possible problem with pride within yourself. This is when you recognize and reach out for a new set of bifocals. You, you start saying, I need more humility, Lord, and I'm asking God for a bigger portion of being Christ-like. I want more humility like Jesus had. The Bible tells us that no good thing dwells in my flesh. We need to ask God to search our hearts for secret pride and show me the symptoms so that I can be changed by God to become more Christ-like. More Christ-like. Hallelujah. More Christ-like. We will always find pride in us. And in others throughout, since we are sinful by nature, we'll always see, if we look hard enough, we will always see pride somewhere. However, we have to learn to encounter pride. And as we have seen pride, will always keep you away from God's grace. It always does. Because anything such as pride that is a sin, it separates you from God. And anytime you're separated from God, you can't be where you're supposed to be with him. Proverbs 29 and 23 says, a man's pride shall bring him low. But he that is lowly of spirit shall obtain honor. We have to remember that as long as we are in pride, we cannot grow in the grace of God. We can't grow. We can't. We can't. Hallelujah. So here, I'm going to tell you about at least seven different symptoms you can watch out for. Some things that sneak up on you and that affect you and it affects your total character. One of the things is fault finding. While pride causes us to filter out evil we see in ourselves, it also causes us to filter out God's goodness in others. We sift through those things, letting only their faults fall in our perception. When I prepared this lesson, it's pride that tempts, uh, I will say that tempts me. It's pride that tempts me from actually, uh, let me see, how do I want to say this? Okay, so, so when I, I got to go back to this. So when I prepare the lesson, right, I, I think about 
um, the different things that uh, I think about the different things that I really wouldn't want to say because, and I'm just being truthful. Sometimes as I'm getting the message together and it's really hitting the heart, sometimes I'm like, man, maybe I shouldn't say, maybe I shouldn't say that because really I got that problem too. You know what I'm saying? I'm just being real with you. Sometimes I shouldn't say this because, you know, I find myself in these. Uh, 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 sometimes it caused me to want to uh, not to have that surgery upon myself. We sift through things that we need to say, letting only the faults fall into our perception. And when, so it's pride that tempts me to want to skip the spirit of God's surgery on my own life and on my own heart. And it wants me to drift or write out things for the people because that old pride thing will say, you know, there's people on there that really need to hear this. They really, really need to hear this. You know, y'all that really need this. Those of us that are responsible for teaching and preaching God's word have to remain humble. We have to stay humble before God, knowing that our hearts need surgery too. I'm not any better than you. I'm not any better than the next person. We need to stay humble and our hearts need surgery too. And when this word goes out, it comes to, to me first. It comes to the preparer of the word first. Therefore, we must look at ourselves and make sure that we are in the right place with God. And, and if we're not, we get right with God before we give that message. The spirituality proud person or the spiritual, spiritually is the word I want to use. The spiritually proud person shows it is his finding fault with other saints. When we remain humble, we realize we have so much work to do in our own evil hearts, in our own evil hearts, that we really don't have time to be trying to fix the next person. We, we really shouldn't. Eric says, sometimes the word just finds you so thankful you have found me. Oh, love, I love you, cousin. A amen. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. Thank you so much. The next, the next little pride thing that sneaks up on us is a cruel and savage spirit. Those who have sickness of pride in their hearts speak of others' sins. They always want to point out somebody else's sin. Sin. They have a disdain, disrespect, an impatience, an annoyance, an anger, a bitterness, and a judgment. Pride is planted inside our uh, denigrating of the struggles of others. We like to, to, to point out everybody else's problems and their sin. You know, when you take that cheap shot at someone or make a joke about something that your spouse has said and he, he or she has an issue with it, because we think we're better because we can't see our own faults, Oh, we in the ministry have to be ever so careful as well as it can even come out in the midst of our prayers. As we say, we're praying for others. That pride can be lurking. It can be lurking as we are so-called lifting up the saints. As to say that they need prayer, but I'm okay. It's not a good, not a good lesson for everybody tonight. Not a good lesson for me. Makes me have to check myself at all. At all times as well. Oh God. Help us all. We need you Lord. We all as born again believers. Ought to treat one another. With as much humility and gentleness. As Jesus Christ has given. And how he treats us. Now the next thing that creeps in on us. Is that superficially. Our lack of importance. Y'all know. The lack of importance. When pride lives in our heart, 
We're far more concerned with others' perception. We're far more concerned with other people's perception of us than the reality of our own hearts. We care more about what other people think about us than what, we, what God thinks about us. We often say things like, I don't care what anybody else thinks about me. I'm just doing things the way I need to do them because I don't really care how people think about me. They can say what they want. They can do what they want. They can talk about me the way they want. Now, to some degree, if you're doing what God told you to do, you don't care. You ain't supposed to care as long as you're being obedient to God. But we also have to remember to keep pride under our feet. You see what I'm saying? Keep it under. We don't let pride rise up. We often uh, uh, think that, but all the while, while we're thinking these things and while we're, it's in our heart and nobody can see those things. We're emerged in hiding how we really are inside. How we really are to keep from anyone knowing, how, what we really do to keep anyone else from knowing who we really are. We tend to fight the sins that have an impact on how others see us and, and, and make peace with the ones that no one can see. Therefore, never really reaching out and getting the help we need because we have deceived ourselves. We have great success in the area of holiness. Yeah, we do. We know how to be holy. We know how to come to church. We know how to shout when we shout. We know how to dance when we dance. We know how to clap our hands when we need to clap them, raise our hands when we need to raise them. Having a form of godliness, but denying the power thereof. We know how to be uh, holy in the outward look that have highly visible accountability. We, 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 we stay away from things like cheating and stealing your neighbor's wife and, you know, coveting your neighbor's, your neighbor's dog and all that. We may not do those things. You know, the big sins. <laughs> but we show little concern for those bigger sins mm -hmm. that happens in secret. Now, let me set the record straight. There is really no such thing as big sin and little sin. Really. Because sin is sin, according to the word of God. But this is just a figure, a figure of speaking, a figure, to, a figure of speech as to say that we spend time covering up what we in our human flesh considers big sins. Those secret sins. While we show the world the best in us. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, we do that. We do that, and we think it's okay. Next thing that sneaks in on us. Daughter Jessica Spooner. Daughter Jessica. There are two other. She does this every time. Okay. Then the next thing is the protective and defending pride. Those who stand in the power of Christ's righteousness alone, they find a self-assured hiding place from the attack of men and Satan alike. But true humility is not knocked off balance and thrown into a defensive position by challenge or rebuke, but instead continues in doing good, entrusting the soul to God. So we as Christians, when we're humble, we stay in constant prayer and in keeping that flashlight on ourselves where it counts, even when others are against us. We still see the salvation of the Lord and take it all to the Lord instead of, instead of attacking people with vengeance because vengeance is the Lord. That's what he says. He says, vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. The next thing that creeps in on us is arrogance before God. Oh, we arrogant. Y'all know how arrogant people can act. We as born again believers should always approach God in humility humble and have that assurance in him. If either one humility or assurance is not present, we got to start doing that heart surgery. We got to allow God to do the heart surgery because our hearts could be infected with pride. If we, again, if we don't have humility and assurance in God, we lack, 
We have pride inside of us that needs to be plucked out. Some of us don't even have any short shortage of boldness before God. Some, some of us have no, no, uh, no boldness before the Lord at all. But if we're not careful, we will forget that he is God. We have to be careful while rejoicing before God that we honor and we reverence him. We reverence him in spirit and in truth. The Bible says in Psalms 2 and 11 that worship the Lord with reverence and rejoice with trembling. Rejoice with trembling. Then there are also those of us, y'all, come on now. I'm teaching us. We, we learning tonight. There are those of us who have or feel no trust or faith before or in God. They don't have no trust and they don't have no faith in which many confuse that as being humble. When you go before the Lord and you don't have no trust or faith, some people say, well, you know, I'm really humble before the Lord. But in reality, it's a symptom of pride as well. When we are feeling this way, what we are really saying to God is that we believe our sins are greater than his grace is. The Bible says that his grace is sufficient. Hallelujah. Thank you, Eric. We fail to believe in God's power and in the blood of Jesus Christ. And by doing this, we are often the power. We, uh, we are often the power of Christ's blood. We are trapped looking at our own faults and sins instead of giving him the praise and the glory instead of instead of giving them to giving those problems and those, those things, the, the, the lack of faith and the lack of pride. I mean, the lack of a, a, a power, not pride, power, the lack of uh, faith and the lack of power. We need to be given that to God. He's the fault fixer. He's the mind regulator. He's the heart fixer. And then the sixth thing that comes on into us every now and then and sneaks in on us is that desperate, being desperate for attention, being tormented for attention. Have you ever been as a child and you, you didn't have the love of your mother and your father and you really just desired to have somebody love you? If you've ever been there, you'll know what I'm talking about. When we recognize that pride is hungry for attention, it's hungry for respect. Oh, they ain't going to do me that way. They better respect me. And worship in all types of ways. Sometimes it sounds like shameless boasting about ourselves. Maybe it's being unable to say no to anybody because we need to be needed. Sometimes we're scared to say no because we, we have this deep desire to know that, to want people to need us. I'm going to tell you, I had that issue at times where I just thought I, I, I needed to be needed. So I was willing to say, I was willing to not say, but I was willing to help people in any kind of way that I could. And that wasn't always helpful to me. It wasn't really getting me anywhere. Sometimes we have to learn to say no. Maybe it looks like obviously thirsting to have a man or woman in your life. You know, always getting into a new relationship or fantasizing about a, a better marriage because you're hungry to be adored. Wow, I know what that feels like too. Maybe it looks like being haunted by your desires for the right kind of car. You know, that sports car that you want that draws all the ladies' attention. Mm -hmm. Or that motorcycle that has all the bells and whistles. Or that right house that sits on the hill looking down at the city. Or that right title of work at work. Or that PhD this and that, 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 that supervisor of the trash committee. All because you seek the glory that comes from men and not of God. We all have a little of this in us. But we have to know when we are putting these things before God. 
are more important than God. When we put these things, we're telling God that he's less important. Who is the giver of all those things. And then our last and final thing that sneaks in upon us. Now I'm sure there are more. I just, I just name in seven is neglecting or favoring others. Pride prefers some people over others. It honors those who the world deems worthy of honor, giving more weight to their words, their wants and their needs. Oh, you met with the president? Oh, whatever he says, I believe. But your mama who birthed you said that person's telling you the wrong thing. You don't believe them. Giving more weight to their words, their wants, and their needs. You know, the type I can only accept words from. The the, the type that I can only accept God's word from because they're the bishop. Or they're so-and-so. They're first lady such-and-such. Evangelist. Who's the who? When poor little sister nobody has a word from the Lord, you don't want to really hear it. I'm just saying, I mean, we do that all the time. People, people, people will, I'll ask people and say, you know, let's do a show together or whatever, which God got me out of really kind of doing that. Cause at first I was trying to incorporate a lot, you know, people, but God, got, you know, he's like, I gave you this. So, okay. But what I'm saying is we want certain people to be in our midst and stuff. You know, the CEO of the company comes by your desk and, And it actually acknowledges acknowledges you and says, hey, how are you doing today? And you just, oh, my God, the boss came by. uh, The CEO came by and he said I was doing a great job. And you care about their acknowledgement because they had a little small conversation with you. But Susie, the person that comes out and takes your trash, speaks to you and you barely acknowledge her. You treat her like she's less than. We sometimes consciously do that, and sometimes we do that unconsciously. Sometimes we just pass over the week because it's inconvenient for us to deal with them. It's unattractive to be around them because they don't seem to offer us as much. Selfish. Selfish. Amen, Eric. You are always more than enough. Please know that. Amen. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And you know what? I thank God I'm not there anymore. Hallelujah. But, oh, children of God, we must do better. We have to look deeper within our own selves. How how is God viewing us? How does God view us? These are the matters of the heart. These are the matters of our hearts. Maybe more of us struggle with pride than we even think. I believe that everybody has some pride issues. We can only encounter pride with humility. Pride cannot be handled with pride. If we try to do that, the result would be chaos and war. If we tried to handle pride with pride, that's why people can't get along. That's why husbands and wives fight so much. Pride, handling things with pride. That's why mothers and sons and fathers and daughters and cousins and that's why bosses and coworkers, coworkers and coworkers fight pride with pride. Nothing works out. If we try to do that, the result would be chaos all the time. Proverbs 15 and 1 says, A soft answer turneth away wrath, but a grievous word stirs up anger. And in James 4 and 1, Whence comes wars and whence comes fighting among you? Come they not not hence, even of your pleasures that war in your members. So y'all, ye lust and have not, ye kill and covet and cannot obtain. Ye fight and war, ye have not, 
because ye ask not. Whenever you see pride, you have to show humility. Whenever you see somebody that's showing pride, you've got to handle them with humility. The same, who Lord Jesus, the same we have to do when we see it in our in other people. We have to look for that in ourselves. It is only by humility that you can overcome the pride. Only by humility. Our Lord did it in the same way. Y'all, Philippians 2 and 3 says, Let nothing be done through strife and vain glory. Nothing. N-O-T-H-I-N-G. Nothing be done through strife or vain glory. But in lowliness of mind, let each esteem others more highly than themselves, better than themselves. Y'all, we have to cultivate love, the godly agape love, the love that doesn't find reason for loving. You just love. The love that is unconditional, you just love. We all know the love is the fruit of the spirit. We all been taught love is the fruit of, is one of the fruits of the spirit. So is humility. So therefore, we have to cultivate love through humility. We've got to. If people know your story, they would truly understand how great the God who saw you through truly. Amen. Thank you, Eric. Praise God. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. To God be the glory. Only him. Only through him. Hallelujah. In the classic chapter of love, love, Paul, he underscores several characteristics of what godly love is. Colossians 13, 4 through 8. Love suffereth long. Love is kind. Love envieth not. Love vaunteth not itself. Love is not puffed up. Love doth not behave itself unseemly. Love seeketh not its own. Love is not provoked. Love taketh not account of evil. Rejoice not, and love doesn't rejoice in unrighteousness, but rejoices in the truth. Love beareth all things, believes all things, hopes all things, and endures all things. Love never fails. There's good news for the prideful, y'all. There's good news for the prideful. First, we must confess of pride. The pride signals the beginning of the end of pride. That's the beginning of the end for pride. Once we confess it, it indicates now that we are in war. We are in war. We're waging war against that pride. For only when the spirit of God is moving, Already humbling us, can we remove the lens of pride from our own eyes and see others more clearly, see ourselves more clearly? We can now identify that disease within ourselves because it's a disease. It's a sickness. Pride is a sickness that will kill you. But we got to identify, we got to, every time we see that pride rise up in us, because it will, we have to now know that we have to have that heart surgery, that it is so needed to be cured. It is something we've got to do or it will kill us because that piece of pride over here and that little piece of pride over there and that little piece of pride, next thing you know, it takes full effect in your life. We got to suffer long. We got to be patient. We got to be kind and loving one towards another. We got to envy not. Hallelujah. We can't puff ourselves up to be something that we're not. We don't swell. We're not supposed to swell in pride. Because that will make us act unseemly. That will make us act wrong. It will make us act rude to other people. Treat other people wrong. We can't go around provoking people because we think we have a right to. 
We can't be so short-tempered and get so irritated about every little thing that goes on. Ooh, Lord, have mercy. Have mercy on us. Have mercy on me, Lord God. Have mercy on us. My God, by God's grace, we can turn to him. We can stand by him, with him, by unselfishly identifying our pride in our lives, that hiding place that is deep within us that we don't want nobody else to know or see. That one, that once it's concealed, that once concealed pride that we have, that we used to have, that has moved us towards death. You see what I'm saying? That pride that we, that concealed pride that we used to have, that moved us towards death, and that acknowledgement of our own individual pride inside of us has moved us towards life by causing us to cling more strongly to the goodness of God, the goodness of Christ Jesus. So we need to pray that God gives us an understanding and a humble spirit and a humble heart in handling pride that is within us. And when we see in others, go on out there with your with my with uh, your sister with Jada, with Jada. Stop barking. My husband went outside, y'all. He went outside, and the doorbell ch- chimes going off. <laughs> help us, Holy Ghost. Help us. Help us. Help us. <laughs> my dog cereal just likes to be heard. I think he maybe he's barking because he's saying Amen. I I, I think that may be it. We'll just say that. But anyway. Um, let me go back. Let's pray that God gives us an understanding and a humble heart in handling pride in ourselves. And when we see and, and that which we see in others, help us to maintain being uh, living the way God would have us live. Search me, O oh God. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. This is what we need to ask God. Search me, O oh God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if there be any grievous way, any bad way, anything that's going to keep me away from you, God. Lead me in everlasting love, everlasting peace with you, Father God. Y'all, if we're obedient to the word of God, Proverbs says, uh, pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before the fall. But he gave, he gives us more grace. Therefore, it says God opposes the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Stay humble. Stay humble in Christ. Love God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. I love you all. You take care. And God bless each and every one of you all. I hope you got something out of the lesson on tonight. God is a good God. And he's worthy to be praised. God is a good God and he's worthy to be praised. Praise him in the morning. Praise him in the noonday. Praise him all day long. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's what we got. to We got to ask God to, to help us be the people that he wants us to be, to be the servants that he wants us to be. Hallelujah. So we're going to hear. Uh, you amaze me by Vicki Yohi. Your presence amazes me. You're welcome. God bless you. Your glory surrounds me. When I walked in this room, I felt your hands upon me. Hallelujah.
your hands upon me to think how great you are still you touch someone like me it's your mercy and grace That word there, that song there always gets me. I hope you have enjoyed tonight. I praise God for each and every one of you that will. A lot of people listen because I'm on the East Coast. A lot of people listen later on uh, or they come on days later and stuff. And so I'm not concerned with whether it's one person looking, nobody looking or 50 people looking. I praise God for every opportunity to come before God's people. I thank God for each and every one of you all. So I would just say, Lord God, thank you for tonight, Lord God. Thank you for your word that went forth, Lord God. Thank you for your presence here tonight, Lord God, because you yet do amaze us, Lord. Father God, for each and every person that hears um, this message or who has heard the message, Lord God, bless them in a mighty way, Lord God. Father God, help us to examine ourselves that we live holy and righteous before your before you, because we know that there's no good thing within our flesh. But Lord God, you put those good things down on the inside. You put those things that are worthy down on the inside, Lord God. So bless each and every person, Father God. Bless them uh, as, as they're going out and they're coming in, Lord God. Father God, put your angel of protection around them all night through the night as they sleep and slumber and as they wake up, Lord God. Father God, let not any accident, harm, or danger fall upon anybody, Lord God. Father God, bless the families that are with the loss, Lord God. Bless my family with loss, Lord God, with the losses, that, Lord, Lord God, that we've endured. Father God, bless and keep each and every person, Lord God. Touch my my mother, my my aunts, my uncles, my cousins, Lord God, my, my, my own children and my husband, Lord God. Father God, bless each and every one of them, Lord God. Father God, as we come together on the next time, Lord God, without the loss of any, touch and Touch and heal and deliver and set free. Let us be new, new people in you, Lord God, as we as we go forth, Lord God. Thank you, and Father God, bless in each and every person. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. I'll see you all next week, and God bless you. Thank you for another night of monumental moments in God's word. Take care. <laughs>